This is the beginning of antisocial and violent behavior in, child, in adulthood and mental impairment. When children get older, 10 to 18 years, we then begin to see the mood disorders coming into play, the psychoses and substance abuse. The benefits of early detection and intervention for these conditions in children have been well proven. Yet half of conditions are routinely missed by health personnel. Not because the health personnel are not adequately trained, this has been found throughout the world, that screening is necessary at all health visits if we are to identify children with developmental and behavioral concerns. It is clearly a concern of parents. Screening parents of six months to three year olds in Jamaica identified behavior problems as their main concern. In fact, we were quite surprised to find that parents were beginning to complain of behavior problems in children under the age of three years and beginning to cry out for help for their, for, to manage their children's behavior. However, parents also often do not seek help. Of 4% of six-year-olds identified by their parents as in need of behavior assistance, none received help. Of 12% of 11 to 12-year-olds, only 4% received help. This slide shows critical window periods for brain development. The violence and aggression that we see in our society is a product of the lack of emotional control being developed in the early years of life. I want you to focus first, however, on the section dealing with vision. If we covered the eyes of children for the period birth to two years, though children would be able to see after we removed that cover, they would never have perfect vision. And nobody does this, clearly, but I'm certain if we knew it, everybody would make sure that they didn't do it. How can we get persons to understand the importance of the development of emotional control in these first few years of life. Because it is in these years of life that the impact of self-regulation and the management of emotions are so important. It is therefore so important that our parents can learn how to manage their children's emotional development. Without it, our destiny is children with violence, aggression, and failure to control their emotions. Next slide. Children also learn stigma and discrimination by being disabled. The commonest disability is that of vision, but slowness of learning has been identified as a major contributor to disability. Children are excluded from educational facilities, and there are also limited services provided for them. Next slide. This next slide is about community life, and I have tried to divide community life into aspects, politics, protests, profiling and party, personalities and professions. Now, I, I, I quickly say to you that I have very little scientific evidence for this section, and I'm going here on what I see and what I hear for large sections of it. Um, children have, and they live in a highly politicized society, though they cannot vote, and one Television, one television program recently, not recently, a few years ago, had two children discussing the fact that they didn't speak with each other because one was JLP and one was PNP. <laughs> they were less than 10 years old and they were at school. Happily, there was a, there was a, a happy ending to this story as the whole, the whole objective of the TV program was to show the impact of the police in assisting the children to work with each other. Next slide. Oh, sorry, back up a minute for me, please. Protests, we, we have not yet studied the impact of protests on children. It's possible that it gives children social network, social networking, a sense of community, leadership skills, a sense of justice, but children are also exposed to violence, aggression, antisocial behavior and injury, and we really have no idea what's happening to them. What we do know is that they're there as part of every single protest that we see. And it is important for us to study what is really happening to them so that we can learn what interventions need to be made. Next slide. 
profiling and partying. Profiling, for those of you who don't have adolescent children, is when persons dress up and look good, largely for other adolescents to see. Many of us would not identify them as looking good, so they, um, they really profile for their peers. And profiling, I'm, I'm using parting here with a little bit of poetic license. I'm using parting here to, to identify um, all kinds of entertainment for children. We've given children choices in the adult world. We've given them choices for dress. They can either have revealing dress or modest dress. We've given them degrading music and we've given them conscious music. We've given them sexually explicit dance and we've given them the intricate dances that only adolescents can do. We've given them television, where we have given them both education, but we've also given them violence and sex. We've given them the internet, where we've given them information, but we've also left them open to danger and pornography. We've given them choices too of personalities and professions. They are the traditional ones, the postmistress, the principal of the school. But now they are also the dancers, the DJs, and the dons. This new and open society has certainly given children choices. I want to focus a little bit on television violence exposure. We talked about sexual activity earlier. Children see 10,000 violent acts per year. 60% of programs and 22% of music videos have violent content. Children's programs are the most violent, particularly cartoons. Many programs glamorize violence and the perpetrators. Over 3,000 studies link television viewing to violent behavior in children. Next slide. Children see some 20,000 ads per year. 2,000 advertise alcohol. 70% of prime time TV and 50% of music videos show alcohol, tobacco, or other drug use. Personalities advertising drugs are popular among teens. One third of adolescents said that TV helped them to start smoking. In Jamaica, we found that more than half of parents don't actually know what their six-year-olds are watching. We've also found that more than 20 hours of television leads to reduce school performance, and watching action programs has led to attention problems, delinquency, and aggression. It is recommended that parents guide and control television much as they would medicine, given out in doses appropriate for children's ages. Now we come to violence, child abuse, and neglect. Children can be victims, and children can be perpetrators. I want us to walk the road of a typical Jamaican child. This is a typical urban Jamaican child. And see the diet of violence that they are fed from day to day. Before they leave home, they observe adult behavior in the home. Two out of every three see and hear adults verbally abusing each other. One out of three see adults throwing objects and hitting each other. One out of five see adults kick, beat each other up, or threaten each other with a gun or a knife. They're not, they don't consider this that much of a problem. They're really more concerned about the violence that they're receiving. So before they leave home, their personal experiences of violence are that eight out of 10 receive verbal aggression from the adults in their home, and eight out of 10 also get hit. Next slide. While walking in their communities, nine out of 10 see fighting, seven out of 10 see stoning, six watch police arrests, five see a dead body, most often a body with death caused by violence. Four see someone stabbed, three see someone being robbed, three see someone being shot. One out of a hundred will themselves be shot at. At school among their peers, three out of 10 get beaten up, two out of 10 get stoned and robbed, and one out of every 10 get stabbed. In the classroom, five out of every 10 receive verbal aggression, and seven out of every 10 are hit. When they return to their communities, Four out of a hundred will watch a sexual assault. Two out of a hundred will be the victims. When they lie in their beds at night, four out of every ten will cry for the family member or the family friend that has been lost to murder. But one out of forty will cry more deeply for the fathers that have been lost to murder. We have looked at the factors that lead to aggression in Jamaican children. And there are family factors some of which we have mentioned as being so prominent in our society. The dysfunctional family, the child who is shifted. There's poor school performance, 
Four out of the ten factors are exposure to violence. Three are risk behaviors. Next slide. There are strong links between exposure to violence as children and violent behavior as adults. 300 of 350 persons arrested for murder in 2005, a large proportion were between 12 and 25 years. Seven were between 12 and 15 years. What does violence do to our children? Even before they are born, a violent society impacts on children. The mother watches violence, her steroid levels increase. The steroid levels pass over to the brain of the unborn child and begin to affect the child's brain. The child who is impacted on by violence through the mother is born irritable and fussy. And that child already begins to have a difficult parent-child relationship. Postnatally, that child also develops their own steroids and their brain is also changed. The brain of children that have been exposed to high levels of steroids is actually smaller than that of children who have not. Children should, norm should normally develop trust during childhood. It's part of their normal developmental process. But they quickly learn mistrust and fear and anger when someone walks into their home and holds up their entire family. How can they trust their parents to keep them safe? They are angry and they are fearful. They learn grief and loss because they have experienced it personally. They've had to move around because of violence. So there's physical instability and because of loss there's emotional instability. In their communities, they must remain alert to what is happening because it is a life-saving ex experience. So they're hyper alert at all times. They can't learn when they're hyper alert, therefore they suffer in their classrooms. We have already mentioned the impact of, on violence and aggression. Children lose hope and develop risk-taking behavior. The impact of violence on children is clearly a significant one, and it is, it is our responsibility to reduce the level of violence. Adolescence, however, is this internal crossfire. This is not something that we have created. We can calm down a little bit now because we haven't created this. Adolescence is there. But adolescence is not new. Aristotle said, you are heated by nature as drunken men by wine. Socrates said, they're inclined to contradict parents and tyrannize teachers. And in Shakespeare's A Winter's Tale, it says, I would there were no age between 10 and 23. <laughs> I'm sure some of the parents here are wishing there was no such age themselves. Adolescence is a period of life when children are physically healthiest, strongest, have the greatest agility and speed. Yet it is second only to the perinatal period, that period shortly after birth, for death and illness. The main cause is control of behavior and emotions, as when we look at the main causes of death, we see that it's suicide, drug use, and motor vehicle accidents. We have known for some time about brain development at birth, that there are periods of rapid growth based on experience, followed by pruning away of the areas of the brain that we don't use. Because we have had um, technology that has left us with, the, with MRIs, um, we were able now to follow children's brains. And at adolescence, a second period of rapid growth was noted, but only in the frontal lobe, that period, that, that section that's right behind the forehead. There's a second period of pruning, growth, then pruning and sculpting. Begins at about 11 years in girls and about 12 years in boys. This section of the brain is responsible for planning, memory, organization, and modulation of mood. I am sorry to report to the parents of adolescents that it doesn't end until early adulthood. <laughs> this is a state of internal crossfire. We have a sexually mature body with a brain that is considered a work in progress. It's been likened to somebody being given a racing car without a driver's license. However, we need to recognize it for what it is. It's a second important point of intervention, though this intervention is more limited than at birth. This is the period at which we lose many of our children. Understanding this period better, parents, teachers, all of us, will allow us to improve the outcomes for our children. 
How do children respond to these challenges of childhood that we have given them? Next slide.